Being human, do you ever wonder what makes us who we are? Our habits, preferences, or where we came from? We are expressing ourselves in thousands of ways every day through our choices. Let's have a conversation with people who are having interesting lives. My name is Alan Walker. I'm a doctor of chiropractic and a human being. I'm Dr. Alan Walker, and I would like to welcome you again to, I think this is the sixth podcast of Being Human. And with us today, we've got a good friend of mine, Dimitri Easy. And Dimitri um, is uh, someone who was not born in this country. We'll explain more about that later. He's here, uh, lives in this country with his wife and his, uh, his child. Um, and Dimitri's interested in many things very similar to me. Um, spirituality, he's interested in, in music and uh, he enjoys festivals as I do and travel so um, I wanted to bring him on because of it well to be honest he likes to talk about all the things I like to talk about so uh, welcome Dimitri I'm glad to have you on thank you um, thank it you. might be a good idea just if we start off um, just talking about whereabouts you're originally from and um, and also your wife and um, where your parents age, you know, where your parents live, whether they live in this country or where, where they're living now, are they still alive? What do they do for a living, that sort of thing? Sure. Yeah. So I came from Latvia, which is in northern eastern Europe. Never heard uh, of it, no. <laughs> Doesn't ring a single bell. Uh, it's uh, right on the border with uh, Russia. And uh, it has long history of changing sort of... Uh, governments uh, it used to be russia then used to be german used to be under sweden now it's independent um yeah so my parents came from latvia as well but uh, none of them live in latvia neither me uh, because uh, when we economy is improving but about 18 years ago when i moved to uk it was a bit still uh, Post state after Soviet Union collapse, where it was change of uh, it was massive kind of economical and political uh, crash or disaster, which uh, changed a lot. Uh, yeah, and we have uh, moved out. Uh, How old were you then? I was 20, 22, 2004 I moved. Yeah, you're working at the time, or uh, yeah. Yeah, actually, I was working in a uh, doing a painting, decorating. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I hated it. And we had this uh, new flat, not new flat, old flat, which we were ma making it up. And uh, there was cockroaches, thousands, yeah. thousands of them, yeah. which I had to uh, exterminate. Exterminate before I start <laughs> working it. And I was swearing. Uh, I was spraying all this. We were working with a mask, and uh, and I received a call from a friend who already moved here. And he offered me a job. That's probably the worst job I've ever heard yeah. in my life. <laughs> you have to clear out yeah. the dirt and the cockroaches yes. before you can start yeah. and pa get it painted. And yeah. Yeah. it's just like a, I'm no, 22. It's, yeah. it's if you too go early late shift, that. you come into the kitchen, turn the lights off, and they just thousands of them. Yeah, goes everywhere. It's yeah, terrible. Yeah, and he, I, I didn't think straight away. I said yes, uh, without even knowing where I'm going. You know, because we were like. Uh, uh, cling to any opportunity. After that job, we didn't care where yeah, you were going. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no longer Latvia. Yeah, yeah. So I moved to a nice place called Weymouth, and uh, where I was working in uh, like welding. And oh, UK. Yeah, UK. Yeah. Weymouth. Yeah, Weymouth, UK. Oh, I've heard yeah. of Weymouth, UK. It's beautiful yeah. down there. <laughs> Lovely place, seaside. I born near the seaside, so it really resonated with me. And um, however, it was not much engineering. I was a welder at the time work in fabrication welding and after six months was no more work so then and i moved to northampton and stayed here since where did you meet your wife uh meet my wife uh, in latvia we actually went to school together but then didn't see each other for 15 years and then on the social networks by accident we sort of wow met. yeah that was amazing i didn't yeah. realize that you met you yeah there. that's it yeah and um yeah it's actually uh, it's, it's more to that story but it's, I'll tell you, you know, okay. uh, some other occasion. Uh, um, yeah. And my parents actually then after I would have moved, my parents moved as well. My my mother is now in Germany, my dad actually in Wellingborough. Okay. He's in another family. Yeah. Yeah. I think Germany sounds better than Wellingborough, but um, <laughs> you know I might regret saying that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so it's just standard story of uh, thousands and thousands of uh, immigrants like from Eastern Europe um, just uh, moving first it's uh, for like better money, better life, more stability because you can get a job. I had a nice job before that cockroach things but it was like uh, you get paid maybe once a month and then three months oh sorry we haven't got money you have to wait and you have to feed your family and live on something yeah. pay your bills but there's no stability so that's what most of us moved down here first but then as when you got this stage of like uh, you know okay i'm now established here and now have stable job and thing like this then you start looking for some kind of hobbies that's where you start discovering other opportunities which uh, this beautiful country will give you as well so i'm grateful for that man so you're a coded a coded welder yeah okay and with that gives you a, an opportunity to travel a bit more doesn't it uh, yeah in fact i used to be coded welder but now i moved up and i'm working as a welding engineer so i don't weld anymore but uh, i do a bit more uh service maintenance qualification certification um quality control and so on so on so and what do you do for for, for health that sort of thing are you you're careful about what you eat careful about what you drink you know yeah actually a big I was, boozer yeah uh, I, well i said <laughs> it's a bit stereotypical but uh <laughs> eastern europe is famous for you know, drinking and so on so uh, i came from a family where it was normal you know everyone like had a like a beer or vodka and so on and uh, but i always felt it's not my thing um uh, I was, yeah, I was at a period where I was drinking a lot of alcohol, but then at some point I decided, you know, I need to stop it because it just it drains your energy with these hangovers and so on. Uh, and I started drinking less and then less and less and less. And then at some point I was like one beer a month. And then decided, if I don't drink, why not stop completely, you know? So now I two and a half years, no alcohol and uh, yeah i enjoy it actually so because uh, i feel my brain my brain improved and so on i don't judge other people it's uh, they are the, everyone course, has yeah. their own thing but uh yeah it gave me because uh, i was doing also actually capoeira which is brazilian martial arts and there's a lot of movements acrobatics so it helped help me be be more healthy as well so i also started uh, what's it called capoeira Okay, and yeah. where's it from? It's from Brazil. Okay. It's really fun. Martial arts, it's a blend of martial arts and dance and music. Like Jiu Jitsu? Uh, no, no. It's more, uh, it's a blend of martial arts and dance. If you, if we had time, I can tell you a bit more about that. So in Brazil, the slaves used to use it as a, a sort of martial arts. Uh, they used to practice it uh, and use it as resistance against the masters. 200 years ago or so and uh, then at some point uh, uh, they would get away with the practicing of it because it looked yeah. like they were dancing <laughs> no at some point basically how it was uh, they realized uh, that it's a quite uh, strong power and they banned it so they're not allowed to practice capoeira on the streets nowhere if they see you they took you in prison so what they decide to do they decide okay we pretend we dance so they start playing music most of them worked in the docks and they're like a big circle of people and people like dancing. Actually, breakdance partly came from that culture as well. Did it? And some of the original movements in breakdance came yeah. from Copuera. So, and then when police watching them, they dance. Some police gun, they fight. And that's how they blended fight and dance and music together. So right. they were using some original kind of uh, musical instruments from African and uh, Cuban, not the Cuban, um, latin sort of spanish culture okay, yeah. it's a sort of blend yeah yeah and it's become like a part of their culture and it's uh, very, a lot of fun yeah. how long, so how many years you've been doing this uh about four or five years but lately i had a bad back so i can't do it as much as I'd like to, yeah. to do hence, hence how we got yeah. to know each other a little bit better <laughs> yeah. yeah but yeah. music is a big part of it so um yeah i still play instruments like a drum and there's a another instrument called birin bow which is like Grand, grand, granddad of the guitar or any string instrument. Right. Okay. Yeah, so it's a single string instrument. You hit it with a, a stick. Yes. And it makes African. Uh, yeah, it was originally from Africa, then Brazil slightly modified it, and uh, yeah. 
So it's a lot of fun. So you play drum? Yeah. And you play the beer and bow? Yeah. Uh, what, what else do you play? Uh, yeah, well, um, another thing, uh, I was always a technical person, like a welding. I was interested in computers as well, so I was looking for where, where should I, sort of, uh, which career I should choose. Uh, but at some point, when I was about 35, I decided, no, I can't do it anymore. It's all this metal stuff, all this electronic, all this software, computers. It was like my hobby, you know. And uh, so, no, I said, I can't take it anymore. I was sitting uh, at home and doing some kind of programming after work. And my son pulled me saying, come on, daddy, play with me. It was about three or four or five years at that time. At that time. And, uh, you know, I just couldn't take it. It was a computer was just, you know, this digital world, drug it in. And I decided, no, I said, I stop. And uh, pick ukulele, start playing ukulele, then drums. Always was interested with it, mm. in it, but never got a chance to actually uh, take it and progress with it. So, yeah, slowly I started buying instruments, different drums, ukulele, jingles, shakers, uh, um, flute. And few others, you start, yeah. And then start as soon as you start picking up instrument, you uh, s start meeting people who also play instruments, like jam nights. There's so many opportunities in Northampton. You can go and uh, like uh, open mics, jam uh, nights. Like where? Uh, there's a place called Carmana. It's like a veggie restaurant. Uh, and it's what sorry? Carmana. Yeah. Yeah. And what sort uh, of restaurant is it? It's like a vegan, yeah, vegetarian okay. yeah. restaurant, uh, and the owner is a drummer, like, a, and they have a jam nights once a month, and we just bring your instrument and join in, and no judgment. You don't have to be a musician, you know. And it's, we have different people coming every month with different instruments, with different energy, and it's just beautiful. Uh, sometimes we come up with different rhythms, with different melodies, just improvising all the time, no preparation. Different uh, with lots of different people from different cultures as well. Yeah, yeah. There's a, a bit mix of Latin music, a bit of Eastern European, a bit of Indian, English, uh, whatever. Yeah. Oh, that sounds that sounds fun. That's something mm. I may be doing in in the, in the future. Yeah. Uh, what quite interesting is that, is that you have. Your stringed instruments, you know, just about. I play the flute, I play ukulele, I play guitar. Uh, you know, yeah, I've got a few, couple of djembes. Of course, yeah. yeah, of course, yeah. What, what one one day? Just that, uh, one thing that, that sort of crossed my mind. There's not been an interesting uh, story to how someone comes into this country. Do you want me just going back to yeah. that and asking you how sure. did you? Was there a, an interesting story of how you, you travelled? Did you come by train? Did you come by plane? How did you get to the first time you came to the UK? Well, first of all, I was lucky that in 2004, Latvia joined the European Union. So before that... No, the visas was, weren't a problem? Yeah, yeah, so I could just come and start yeah. work here. Uh, however, the first time it was <laughs> quite difficult. Uh, I was actually, for example, talking about English. I had school, I had the highest marks. Uh, I thought I'm uh, the best in class. My English exam was wonderful. A-levels English was super. And I came here and uh, f arrived on this plane. I just took, a, bought a ticket, uh, packed up the bag. After, How old were you? Twenty-four. Uh, yeah, twenty-two. Yeah. Hmm. After all this yeah. cockroach yeah, things, yeah. three days later, I already <laughs> flown, flown in, and arrived to Heathrow. And okay, I need to buy a drink, so I come to the booths or something with H. Smith, and ask for, can I have a drink, please? And uh, the lady behind the counter, she asked me something, and I go, I'm uh, uh, no, sorry, and she's, blah, 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 blah. I said, no, I just want a drink. I said, blah, 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 blah. What, what language she speaks? I'm in mean, England. And I said, could you please repeat? And she's, uh, she's like, do you, would you like uh, like a diet coke or zero coke or something like that? Yeah, but so the way the she said is, that, yeah, the speed was she just, said it was too I fast. I felt you, okay, all right, so we got. <laughs> over that but then I arrived to this factory where I should work and in the morning so you, you arrived by plane yes by okay, plane. not at the go. back of the lorry <laughs> no, <laughs> no it's, a, it's a much much better way of arriving um, yeah um, 
Yeah, and uh, so yeah, next day I went to work, and this fact and it was exactly the same. I couldn't not communicate. You know, I, to the point I thought I'm not going to get a job because uh, it was like. Um, so this agency already arranged, so we're going to arrive, they're going to support us in the first steps. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like I arrived, I have an interview, or then I already had a job. But yeah, yeah. nevertheless, uh, the communication was absolutely, absolutely difficult. It took me not more than a year to get used to pronunciation, to, in order to understand that. And my English, perfect English, which I've been taught in school, London is the capital of Great Britain, you know, how, like, how mm -hmm. they, but uh, it, they couldn't understand me either. So because uh, uh, you were you, learning yeah. the face language, so, yeah, I, I know yeah. how you feel. I'm doing it the same. Yeah. I'm learning Ukrainian at the moment. And yeah. uh, it's it's obviously the alphabet is different. Um, what is a B in the, in the UK is a is a V in, the, in Ukrainian. You know, it's a, it's a real all, everything's mm -hmm. mixed up, jumbled up. Ends are ends are peas yeah. and peas are R. It's a it's a mess, yeah. but it's um and what we would normally you know we, we have our alphabet in the UK suddenly changes the thirty three symbols in uh, Ukrainian. So yeah, I'm enjoying myself at the moment, and I'm certainly this will be my third trip coming up in October to mm -hmm. Ukraine. All right. So I'm excited about going back there and using my very pigeon Ukrainian. Mm. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll probably get bored of that within <laughs> probably the first fifteen minutes and go back <laughs> to speaking English. <laughs> and wait for those they, them to suddenly sink into English and then start speaking that language to me. So yeah, I'm ex quite excited about you using language, and I'm quite aware of how difficult it is when you go to you learn a language and go to mm -hmm. a country mm -hmm. and find that it's totally different when you get there. What yeah. you've learned and how it works, uh, and the speed is a, is a totally yeah. different thing. Speed yeah. can change things, can't it? Uh, so so what, uh, the other thing I was interested in as well is, is with, with yourself. Um, Every country and uh, every culture has different ways of doing food, mm -hmm. and uh, I've obviously spent a couple of evenings with you in the, in the past, and your wife and, and your son, and see how your family eat. And fresh vegetables, um, obviously organic. You go out your way to find food that, in this in British culture, it's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, what's what's your sort of process behind all that? How do you work out? You know, you'd, I've not seen you drink um, anything with sugar. Um, I know that you you sometimes fast. How, you know what's what's your what's your idea on on food consumption and health? Well, it's quite difficult as well. One of the things uh, which um, I've, I've found that every uh, different countries have different sort of uh, attitude to the food and standards are a bit different. You know, so uh, um, a lot of people find British English food is a bit. Uh, or cuisine is a bit boring, you know, compared to Spanish, French, where you know, uh, it was difficult for me as well in the beginning um, to adjust to the habits and things you buy in shops uh, because food is completely different, you know, packaging is different, preparation is different, and uh, it's a bit big country, it's a bit more processed food here as well. Uh, but um, where where I come from, uh, there's more local farmers, more uh, less processed food, more something you buy and cook yourself. But it's improving now actually because a lot of people bit more a bit more conscious. What you've been in this country, it's yeah, improving. Yeah, okay. I mean, when I 2004 uh, and now there's more much variety of organic stuff and uh, labels like. A, local grow and stuff and yeah it's, it's improved a lot yeah we buy organic uh, I do when I can but I'm not really uh, fast about it I, I believe I don't know that our planet's a bit contaminated now so even organic stuff perhaps is not 100% organic no no I, I, I don't doubt that at all mm -hmm. uh, I, I completely agree I right. think that things are that are um, organic I heard that uh, on the Waitrose shelves at the moment that the organic uh, area, um, a friend of mine was went in there and asked about, he'd been told that the some of the vegetables had been sprayed with something with a pesticide mm -hmm. and a chemical that would make them also last a bit longer and asked the cashier, knowing the cashier wouldn't know. So the cashier asked the supervisor, the, cashier, the supervisor didn't know, the supervisor went to the manager and the manager said, I'll find out and came back, it all happened within 15 minutes. 
and said yes actually there was the um, organic mm. food had been sprayed yeah. with a coating um, which would have made it usually if it was done at the farm it would no longer be classed as oh, yeah, organic okay. so there's all sorts of things happening yeah, at the moment yeah. but not to say that for me my choice is to buy organic mm -hmm. because you are supporting the farmers who mm -hmm. are trying their best to well, keep things in the, the, in the pattern well. of nature yeah and i really. think going off the pattern of nature mm -hmm. it can only go one way so sure. um i will still be buying from places like waitrose and mm -hmm. in the organic mm -hmm. place and i will certainly go to the i'll go to farmers um i don't go to farmers markets but there are a few farms around daventry that i go to Hmm. Um, and there's a garden centre also that sells vegetables and meats and that are all organic and they're very proud of what they, they stock in there so I'm very happy to go there as well so there are places and it, it feels it fills my heart to actually help and support these people and yes it is sometimes more expensive but I'm afraid um, what will happen in the end anyway when the organic people have yeah. gone if they do lose uh, the fight mm -hmm. food will go up It'll all go up anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah. all about profits, isn't it? So while, they, while they're there, and I hope they stay, I'll be supporting them. I think everyone, mm -hmm. it's not a bad thing if people do. So um, do you, your family, it's important that you... I think I've only ever seen you drink water. You don't drink alcohol. No, not anymore. I think two and a half years, no alcohol. Yeah. Actually, I became vegetarian three, three and a half years ago and vegan since New Year. Okay, so, so. vegetarian. No alcohol. No. Then... You went to being uh, vegetarian. First vegetarian, then no alcohol, yeah. then vegan oh, okay. since New Year. Uh, yeah. How do you how do you survive? You know, you look so healthy. How do you? Uh, well, it's, again, I think it's quite a big uh, misconception that all this vegan you need meat and so on. So maybe I don't think maybe veganism or vegetarianism is not for everyone. You know, some people can't just can't like my wife. I'm actually the only one vegan in the family. So cooking is a bit of a, bit of a challenge. Uh, we used to like cook and share the food together. Now probably we share thirty percent of cooked food, you yeah. know. Uh, but uh, most of it I have to cook my, for myself. Uh, yeah, uh, I, it was like uh, you know this veganery stuff, like a uh, year resolution. Okay, for one month I become vegan, see how it goes, and I decide to well. I'll do that and actually I so enjoyed it I realized it's not that difficult I and don't I think it is very difficult for yeah. Eastern European type cultures because you're used to eating raw foods vegetables you know sitting with a load of things go get a sharp knife start cutting up mm. your fruit and veg and sure. and, and eating yeah. it on a plate is that's yes. all the preparation yeah. you need lots of bright colors this is pretty much vegan but it's the only thing obviously is with that it's without the meat it's yeah. without the eggs it's, it's without the yes. dairy, isn't it? So it's it is uh, true, but at the same time, when I go to Latvia, uh, it's miles away as uh, it, it, it's not nowhere near as popular as in UK. So if I go to the shop, uh, there's a shelf like that with a vegetarian food. Is mm -hmm. none of them is vegan. So actually, when I go to Latvia, I sometimes have to revert to vegetarian because otherwise there won't be nothing to eat. Unless mm -hmm. just, uh, so Does that affect your stomach when you go from vegan to vegetarian? No, no. No it's difference at all? No, I do it like once a year when I go on holiday. Even, uh, but as a lot of Eastern Europe is like big meat, is, meat eaters. Y yes, it's true about fresh veggies and so on, but same time it all comes with meat. And uh, when when you say I'm vegan here in UK, people respect it. Oh, yeah, well done. When you say I'm vegan in Latvia, people... Well, I'm, not, I'm not so sure I agree with people respect you if you're vegan in this country. I think they might smile and go, okay, oh, okay. you're yeah, one of those. Yeah, but actually, yeah. it, it is pretty much, oh, mm -hmm. you're one of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's always a pain in the ass. It's the biggest problem that we get is when someone comes mm -hmm. to your home yeah, yeah. and you're cooking them dinner and yeah, they say yeah. they're vegan and uh -huh. you've got to go, right, I haven't got a clue what <laughs> that means. That's, I think that's yeah. where Britain is at the moment, sure. generally. Yeah. It's like, does that mean... You know, there'll be a discussion in the kitchen. Does that mean they, they can, we, need, we can cook with butter or we can't cook with butter? Yeah. Can we cook with this oil? Can we cook with that oil? You know, what's in, what's yeah. out? It's, it's quite... So I think vegan is a bit of a problem. Vegetarian is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. By the way, I was a vegetarian for a year. I went vegetarian. Okay. And um, I came away from the vegetarian food because I wanted to become more healthy. Mm -hmm. And all I found was I'd put on a stone at the end of it. 
Yeah, which is a common sense, scenario. Yes, so yes. I thought before yeah. I put on any more weight, yeah. I'm just going to step mm -hmm. away from this temporarily and uh, just carry on with the organic situation. Uh, and yeah, uh, I don't, we don't eat a lot of meat anyway. Um, we tend to uh, focus when we do eat meat on, on fish, mm -hmm. uh, fresh fish, uh, which often I'll catch myself. You know, I do a bit of trout fishing. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. probably don't want to hear this, Dimitri, but uh, it's true. And uh, yeah, so that's, this is where I'm getting my organic yeah, fresh yeah, food from. Yeah. And uh, we, but like I say, we don't eat a great deal. I'd probably eat less than a cigarette box of, mm -hmm. of meat a day, mm -hmm. which is a lot less than, than most people. And I, I've got quite a big frame to sort of oh. um, to feed. And I've done well. The other thing I do, which I don't know about yourself, do you fast? Yes, I do. Uh, intermittent fasting. Lately, I haven't done so much since I actually become vegan. I don't need to do it as much. No. Uh, oh, another thing of benefits when I become vegetarian, well, what I noticed straight away is my energy levels. Uh, rather than being like that, they become like a sort much of... Much more even, yeah. Yeah, for example, after having a uh, heavy dinner with some meat, especially... With having red, what, sorry? Heavy, heavy, I mean, not, I mean, a full dinner, you know? Yes, like a good a, dinner, yeah, like or a dinner. big, large breakfast. Yes, yeah, you then. feel a bit, like, because uh, most your body needs a lot of energy to digest it, process it, yeah. and then during this process, you're a bit lazy. Robbing Peter to pay Paul a little yeah. bit, yeah. So I found when uh, now I feel much more energy. Yeah. So uh, at work, a ex good example, uh, I work until quarter past four, by three o'clock, and I used to be sleepy, and I was like, oh, I want to go home now, I'm full of energy, ready to go until five, and so on. Uh, I can sleep better because my, uh, have my quality of sleep improved, because if I eat in the evening, say six, seven o'clock, have a meal, have a chicken or pork or whatever, uh, your uh, the digestion process is quite long. So while you sleep, again, body spends energy rather than uh, rather recovering. So it's not resting, not it's resting. actually yeah. still working. So now I, I, I used to sleep eight hours, now it's seven hours for me. It's more than enough. So there are benefits, and uh, I don't need to drink coffee, and, uh, don't need to drink coffee to boost my energy yeah. levels. Again, uh, yeah, they like uh, more level. So mm -hmm. with coffee, you have a uh, big energy intake, not intake, I was uh, you know, after coffee, half an hour, one hour, yeah, and then it, it drops yeah. now a bit more level. Yeah, and uh, fasting, uh, same thing. Uh, rather than fast, I just have big intervals between meals. Not like a day fasting, but I do like there's different, like 8, 12, or 7, 8, 16, something like okay. that. Yeah, sometimes I practice that. I do 16, 17 hours uh -huh. of every day, and I've been doing it now oh, for the last two months. really? Wow. Excellent. And um, so, yeah, but I do drink black coffee during that time. Um, I certainly get through uh, two and a half to three liters of water a day, fil filtered water as well. Mm, I won't too, drink from too. the tap. Yeah, so I'm taking out the chlorine and the fluoride because mm. I think it's, gr I'm glad it's in there, but I don't want to, uh, it keeps the water good until mm -hmm. it gets to the, my tap. And then after mm. that, I want to be putting it in a glass that is not going to be going into my, into my body. If it's good enough to kill bacteria, then it's going to be killing living things. And I don't want living things dying in my body. Mm -hmm. I'm a living thing. So I filter all that out and then uh, I'm, I'm drink, you know, like I say, two and a half litres, three litres of filtered water a day. And that works well for me. Um, so you said that your wife is not a vegetarian. No. So she's just e eating yeah, no normal food. Yeah, she just food. loves the taste of uh, meat and um, she doesn't like... Well, one of, the, one of the reasons why it's made me so easy to go vegan and vegetarian and vegan is uh, I started enjoying Indian food. So there's a lot of lentils, a yeah. lot of uh, hot food, rice, and uh, so it's easy to cook it. Uh, you do know, curries and this kind of food and I enjoy it and so and it's very healthy and you're living in Northampton so is it easy to get a hold of yeah this? local Indian shops if so a lot of um, products to make uh, Indian cuisine and I have some friends who gave me some good recipes and yeah everyone, and I've become so creative with the uh, with the uh, cooking where I wasn't never was because with uh, one of you meat eater it, it's very easy to become lazy you know have a steak have something else yeah simple 
and you have most of the nutrients from the simple foods. With, a, with a, being vegetarian or vegan, you need to be more creative to get more variety of different grains, different vegetables, different uh, foods in order to get all the nutrients you need. Otherwise, you might get a bit of deficiency like B12 and so on. Uh, so that actually puts a lot of people both. They think, oh, it's getting too complicated. You yeah. Know? Need, uh, because people are lazy, you know, they want quick food, this junk, and you know, all this junk food culture. Uh, but now it's becoming much easier because uh, there's a lot of vegan food, vegan uh, big counters and Tesco's waitress. Uh, if you're, uh, I use it sometimes, processed food as well, although uh, you just, you know, I haven't got time. Uh, I need just something quick. What about oils? What sort of oils are you using? I know there's a lot um, with people writing at the moment about you know a lot of the oils that we're f- cooking and frying with have were originally designed for engineering mm. Mm. for um, for oh. for the vegetable oil used and designed for this viscosity special viscosity mm. for certain um, pr- pr- uh, ways of using it with mechanics um, and suddenly someone had the great idea that actually we maybe we could sell this to the general public for mm. cooking foods. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, 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 there's a massive amount of information mm. to find out about mm. that. So the, uh, the only bottles I was told you should buy as far as oil is concerned is try, you're pretty, not to say you can't buy plastic mm-hmm. bottled oil, but you're much more likely to get a good inert oil mm-hmm that's used for cooking if you buy it out of a glass bottle. Okay. So anything yeah. in plastic bottles, they really don't care too much about the quality of, of the oils. Mm-hmm. But it's, again, it's massive. You can't just go on, listen to a podcast and mm-hmm. think, oh, it's just glass. You really need to read a lot about this stuff sure. and to learn. Right. But of course, the more you learn about it, the more there, there is to learn. And it really does open up a bit of a nasty box there. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I, I tend to buy a glass. It just went on and on. It becomes almost a um, a hobby when you're dealing with food, doesn't it? Yes. So uh, organic, where you buy your food from. Is it really organic? How much water should I be drinking? Should I be sure. eating salt? We, oh, yeah. oh, you shouldn't. So yeah, it, yeah, there's yeah. salt in me. What sort of salt should we be eating? And then sure. the next minute you're thinking about whether well, you do need some sort of salt. Yeah, Himalayan salt is very good. Oh, yeah. great. So Himalayan salt's good. And what else are other sort of salts? And it goes on yeah. and on uh-huh. and on and on. I'm going to do the same. Actually, in oils, you can go even next level up. Uh, I have a friend which inspired me, and I'm, that's my next level. You buy oil press and uh, do oil yourself so she have this oil press and so she binds grains so uh, anything you can make all oil from even hemp for example mm-hmm. uh, so for example you buy a bag of hemp load this press and press it it's automatic or hand pressing where you like uh, there's a like um thread it um, press yeah i understand oil, yeah. yeah and then uh, leave it then uh, within 24 hours or so, maybe more, drop by drop, you have a little jar of oil which you made yourself out of something you just. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's absolutely. It's, I love this idea. That's my next step. Step is well, to buy for, one of for these. For me, it seems you can't go too far wrong with a glass no. bottle of olive oil, and yeah. so that's that's what I'll be. That's yeah. what I'll be sticking to. With, with all of the food, the, the your, your sort of general lifestyle, it sounds like you're bordering on Buddhism. Uh, well, <laughs> I actually am Buddhist. Uh, I, I was initiated as Buddhist in 2005 when I went to Tibet. You went uh, to Tibet? So, yeah, so there was three weeks in t- ex- We just spent half an hour talking about Northampton and foods, uh-huh. and then you tell me that you uh, you are Buddhist yeah. and you went you lived in Tibet. Okay. But you know when... Uh, we, we, all that means is we'll have to bring you on again another yeah. time. <laughs> Sorry, go, go on. But you know, if you're Buddhist, you believe that the, the temple in the world is inside of you. You don't have to go anywhere. You close your eyes, meditate, and you take yourself when you are what you want. So uh, being there somewhere physically... It might not necessarily we're gonna give you enough as, as much inspiration uh, imp- uh, impression as if you go inside of you and find these. So, but it's certain help. Certain so, help. what you went on holiday there? You no, traveled we had there. A, we had a group like expedition. So three days in Nepal and then three weeks in. How old were you? Twenty. It was a year actually after I moved to UK. Right. Uh, my first couple of grand, which I can spend. Yeah. You know, 
in Latvia. Where are you going to go? Benidorm. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, yeah. no. Actually, yes, proper holiday. Yes, I'm going to go to Tibet yeah. and see something. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I went with my mom, her boyfriend. Yeah. Because they're into these kind of things, like the same as me. Actually, I am, uh, because of my mom, She, I, I become sort of, went the same way as her. Yeah. Started interested in uh, spirituality and all you know, different things like Buddhism and other teachings, you know. Uh, yeah, and we went to Tibet. Uh, it was so good, so good. Uh, uh, people, people there, like they so poor. They don't have don't have uh, luxury like we have. They live in uh, simple houses. Um, uh, they use yaks. Yak, yak is uh, like an animal. Uh, it's like a truck. They're like uh, they they use yaks for everything. They carry their goods. They uh, their pool. They they use it to cook uh, as a fuel to f heat their homes, as a insulator to heat, insulate their house walls. To do milk as well. <laughs> so so they're using these milk. animals, the yak. Yes. The yak yeah. is for so, everything. Yeah. Travel, uh -huh. the, the lighting fires yeah. with the manure. So because they don't have much vegetation, so they use whatever they. Uh, yeah, and they eat meat. You can't, you have, there's no vegetables. You can't be vegan there. So this is another thing. You know, some of the, the people in the world, they just, it's the way they are. They, the part geographically located, they can't be vegetarian. You can't force them. They will die. <laughs> but, this ever so nice people they all smile they they got nothing they got more money they, they have a they're struggling with the food but you ask are you happy yes i am happy you know and you give them some gifts uh, yeah, some you know you share something you know give him jacket or whatever new new jacket some uh, maybe some digital device no was no phones mm -hmm. at that time but i gave camera yeah, they're happy. It's for them. It's like, uh, wow. Well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it made made me change my perception of the world. You know. Um, and it's, yeah. How long were you there for? Three weeks. Three weeks. Okay. And we were, three weeks. You went Buddhist. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we were. It was like I you know we were traveling and stopped in different. It wasn't like a just for sake for Buddhism we didn't stay at one place like a monastery we were traveling uh, say from Nepal up to the through the mountain through the serpentine road into the plateau of Tibet which is nothing for the three weeks you're on these jeeps going along the, this desert these beautiful views and the weather changing and uh, it, it was like a, the weather in Tibet is it's another topic of conversation you can have your s one hand in the uh, sun and have a sunburn and have another s hand in the shadow and have a frostbite at the same time. And that's literally what we had. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. So what did you get from, from you know, the, the, the people were good, but did you feel the energy from the place? Yeah, so I was looking for some kind of, um, I was like, I think, oh, okay. Tibet is, I read a lot of books, it's a magical place, there's a lot of books, books about all these monks, you know, they, uh, <laughs> uh, there's a, there were a couple of books I read where there's basically, there's a monks which are guarding some kind of entrance in the hidden uh, passages in mountains where there are some kind of uh, uh, aliens buried in mm -hmm. three meters long and they don't want anyone to know about them but you know things, things like this stories yeah. like that so it was very very you know um, cu curious to see what it's like you know and uh, yeah and we went to certain some places uh, which considered to be as uh, places of power or some kind of history or something there uh, a special energy thing like this and there's a mountain called Kalash it's a uh, its mountain looks like a pyramid and they believe that uh, there's two religions in the world buddhism hinduism and there's another one three religions i apologize uh which believe this is like a sacred mountain and it's apparently it's a uh, <laughs> uh, the border or the between our world and parallel world 
So it's very interesting. I mean, literally, mountains look like pyramid. And there's more, one read a, a book I've read, there's a sort of distances between different uh, monuments around the world, mm -hmm. which all have a, like a s uh, same mileage. Right. So between, between each, the Egyptian yeah. pyramid yeah. and this Kailash, I mean Kailash and uh, Stonehenge. Right. And there is uh, uh, East Islands with the figures. And they're all connected into the network of some kind of thing like this, which been built by you know, ancestors. So it was very, very fascinated. I was young, you know, I wanted to hmm. be there. And, but I was a bit disappointed because I didn't find any magic. I didn't find any, like, I don't know. Three some, meter high aliens. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But it was a good experience, great experience, yeah. Um, uh, mm. But you might, it was enough for, to um, offer you some a huge amount of spirituality uh, yeah definitely definitely because you know uh, did that is that the energy. biggest thing that's changed you do you think it's one of them things one of things things uh, is because energy is special there uh, and it's like a pilgrimage you know you walk you actually this mountain you have to go uh, do a walk and the buddhist belief every time you walk around it you uh, revert your karma you improve in your karma, so all the bad karma goes sort of away. So they believe in reincarnation. So one circle around it, you need to have less re reincarnate one once less in, right. this, in this physical world. That's what they believe. And uh, the, and we were walking with that. You know, five thousand meters uh, in snow oxygen. So you do three steps, and you like you just run. Uh, start around the stadium right but buddhists yeah. they jump around in it or oh, some others they're very very devoted Energetic, believers they yeah. actually crawl around this mountain it's three days yeah three days it's a path so right. it's about i don't know 60 70 miles you have to walk around but yeah i had a temperature of 40 i had a fever and everything where the oxygen some people were in our expedition were uh, really poor state uh, where to carry them but we made it and it's you know this kind of experience give you uh, uh, changing you changing yeah you, you know absolutely. it's like a big meditation where you go and you feel, oh, what I'm doing here I'm suffering you know the body is suffering but you believe some kind of you know you're gonna get some what are you looking to do in the future have you got any plans for the, the next sort of couple of years things that you want to do some things that you were some goals yeah I'm interested in uh, I will, uh, in music, um, a bit of music journey. I never been was a musician, never educated like musician. So I started doing music when I was 35, as many people before. Yeah, and now I uh, met quite a couple of good uh, groups I'm uh, hanging around with, like a Jambi group, Capoeira group, uh, like a jam, nice in Kamana. And I met a couple of musicians. We we're involved in certain sort of, we have a couple of these, but some projects, or some jamming together, and going to the festivals and the workshops. So, uh, yeah. Mm, so, it's a lot, lots of mixing with like minded yeah, people. Like -minded people. Who are on the same yeah. journey of, of yeah. music and spirituality. Because uh, I feel, find music really helps. Uh, spirituality is all about disconnecting from, not disconnecting, but um, how to say, you know, with, uh, with all this corporeal world. Uh, you are constantly scrolling this news feed, TikTok, Instagram. You are, uh, you, you know, I believe we, we, we all want to have some kind of pleasures. We want to fulfill our uh, desires, fulfill our brain with some kind of information. And we're constantly f looking for this. It's like a consumerism, you know, we consumerism, we, we want to eat, grab them. Sh find always something new to eat, you know, uh, where we get some energy. And same as information, uh, we also become very, con consuming information become one of the ours. It's like junk food, mm -hmm. same as junk information. So I believe you can actually be vegan as a the physically food eater, but it's also veganism uh, in regards of information that's really interesting it's because like if you eat, eat um, uh, you can, can keep consuming this junk information well there's hundreds of videos of tiktok and it does us. affect us it affects us yes, the negative yes, vibration exactly. of the news and yeah. the things that might happen yeah. 
you know, this is going on, this is going on, it can af actually affect us in the same way as yeah. eating McDonald's every day, you know, it's, uh, and, and Burger King, mm. let's not leave them out, you know, so and, we, uh, and Kentucky Fried Chicken, I and all the rest of the yeah, stuff, that's, that's uh, massive amounts of uh, polluted oil, huge amounts of salts and sugars and fizzy drinks for your kids. And I believe that <laughs> information, <laughs> uh, inf junk, junk information uh, has a more, uh, is stronger in fact than even food. Uh, because our brain is, con is, is the biggest consumer of energy, uh, physical and mental. So, uh, yeah, so we are attacking our poor brain from all the Both sides. sides yeah. Yes, and uh, you, we all find, you know, when you on this phone a couple, three hours, you become a little bit more stressed, a little bit more tense. and uh, More unhealthy than you were when you yeah. started, yeah. So uh, there's a couple of... Um, Before you started the meal. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, Dimitri, I'm going to have to wind it up on that, but but only for this time, because I definitely want to bring you back. In fact, uh -huh. I'm thinking uh, I brought, brought in a, a good friend of both of ours, actually, a mutual friend. Um, we brought Daz, and uh, there's a couple of things that I've got some questions for both you and Daz, and it might be good to bring you both in at the same time, so the three of us in the same room talking about things, but we'll probably do that in something like October, November, mm -hmm. if that's all right with you. Really, it's been a pleasure having you on here um, for the, 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 the sixth episode of Being Human. So again, thank you very much, my friend. No it's Thanks been a pleasure having, having you on there. Yeah. Really interesting thank learning you. about your family and your, your, your journeying and also your eating habits. And just, we didn't even talk about sleeping habits too much, um, but it, the whole thing's been really interesting. And of course, one of the reasons why we know is because you're one of my clients, as of a, uh, uh, my chiropractic clients. So yeah, it's, I've really enjoyed it. And thank you for, for uh, accepting the invite and coming yes, on. So thanks very much. And if you've enjoyed the, the podcast today, then please like and subscribe. I know I've certainly enjoyed it. And I will look forward to doing it again for episode seven. Thank you.